I don't know about you guys, but before I actually had to do it, I've always wondered what it would be like and how you would go about flying through TSA with your firearm or, you know, going through TSA or traveling with a firearm on an airplane. Can it be done? And like, and if it can be, like, how do you go about that? So I'm here right now to answer that question since I just did it twice, actually. Moving to Iowa, flew to LA. So from Philadelphia to LAX, I had to check my firearm through TSA. It's actually super easy. It is not a nerve wracking thing. It's very easily, just make sure you go on a TSA website, check your airline rules too. I flew American Airlines. They're all pretty much the same as far as it goes, you know, what the rules are for, you know, checked luggage and whatever. Uh, check luggage, carry luggage. You cannot carry a firearm in your carry on luggage. It must go through checked bag, a checked bag, which means the bag that goes under the airplane in the cargo, your carry bag is different. That's the one that goes above the sea. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is find a good lock box for your firearm. The one I went with is the, the Vo Voltec. I'll leave the link in the description below. This is the Colin, this is not the Colleon, Colleon Norair version. This is just the LifePod 2.0. Actually, I don't even think this is the 2.0. I think this is the older version of it. The 2.0 is a little bit bigger, has some other features. So this is the older version of the Voltec um, LifePod. I guess it's the 1.0, right? But it does have the security upgrade. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So for, this is the first thing you're gonna wanna do. And you don't have to get this. This is about $109 or so, uh, but it is well, well worth it. And right now I have my Glock 43 in there, four magazines, a knife, and a watch and am ammunition so that's a pretty significant amount I, I don't i didn't feel like i was going into a war zone i didn't feel like you know i really was going to need it i just wanted it just in case i mean we we're traveling across the country so with that being said here's a few things to keep in mind one we were traveling tsa to land in lax two i had to go through six different states so therefore i had to check six different states laws as far as it goes what kind of ammo you can have what's the capacity is there restrictions blah 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 now no matter what the restrictions are no matter what ammunition i cannot legally carry this gun but i can keep it in a box safely with me at all times that's not illegal you can travel with a firearm as long as it's safely secure unload it and and, and all that carrying it in a holster on you that's a different thing. You can't do that. That's a federal offense. Is it though? Is it a federal? Now, see, this is the question because it, it's under the federal law. This, they can't really do anything under federal because a, the federal law is the second amendment. You can carry, you can carry, but state laws prohibit you from doing certain things when you're from other states and whatever. So, you know, just don't carry it, right? Cause you're going to get busted. Chances are you're not going to need it. Chances are you're not going to need it, but to have it like in your hotel room, you know, you never know, right? So just, just you know, the reason to carry a firearm is self-defense. You know, you feel safe. Your loved one is safe. Just, just know the rules and do that research beforehand. Don't take my word for it. This is not doing research. Watching my video is not doing research. You know, just because I say, hey, this is the life pod. This is the one I get. That's not doing research. Go do research on other, other pods, other saves. You might find something better that works for you. This is just what works for me. This is, you know, there we go. So anyway, <laughs> so once you figure out, this is the one. Say, hey, I want the life pod like Will got. That thing's awesome, beautiful. It's got the touch pad and all that. Now you're gonna go ahead and look at the rules on the airline, look at the TSA. Now I looked at everything TSA because not only were we, was I ha did I have to fly to LAX, then I had to also drive across the country for three and a half days. So. There was things that I wanted to make sure we had, like, you know, of course I didn't need any of this stuff, but like me being a, pre a prepper and a survivor, a survivalist, and, you know, just having the things I need because it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Don't argue with me. And that's, that's just how we roll, you know, when we do, when we're guys who are prepared or wise men, right? A guy who is not prepared is a fool. So... I took with me some tools. I took, you know, my simple like water filtration kit, a camp cook set, because you never know. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. If that truck would have broke down, she would have been freezing and 
we would have been good because I had the things we needed. Also, the bag, you, you're allowed to have a certain amount of weight on the check-in or carry luggage or checked in luggage, I'm sorry. Once you go over that weight limit, they charge you. Mine was way over the weight limit. It cost me $250 extra to check my bag in through check, check luggage through American Airlines because my bag was like 75 pounds or something like that. Now, I was able to slim that out because I left a lot of stuff with her. I left my trauma kit because I have 16 of them. I don't need all of them here. So I have a trauma kit everywhere in my house. So now she has a trauma kit. She has my good red trauma kit, the good one, the really good one, like tourniquet, blood clot, you know, bullet wound, chest wound, seal, the whole nine yards she has at the other apartment. I have those everywhere here, so I didn't, I didn't need it. So I was able to leave some stuff with her and slim down the weight on the way back. But anyway, that's besides the point. Let's talk about this thing. Uh, so the life pod, you know, you're going to go when, when you figure that out, you got the rules, you know, this is the one you want. You are going to go to the airport. Now you're, you're arriving to the airport, but before you get to the airport, before you do any of that, you're going to want to, let me tilt the camera down so you guys can see how I have this organized here. Before you get to the airport, when you're leaving your house, you want to make sure you set up your life pod box just like it is right now. So what I kept in there was my extra watch. I probably thought I was James Bond or something. I had my watch in there. I had my knife in there because you cannot carry a knife on the airplane. So keep it in here. These weren't in here, but this is taking the place of the ammunition box. So you can't just, you can't just leave rounds floating around in there like that, okay? You have to keep them in the box that they came in. All right, so I kept a box of 25 rounds. This is a small square 25 round box. I already threw it out, so that's why I'm using this in place. So 25 rounds in the box, and that, that was here, okay? Just a 25 round Hornady Critical Duty, 135 grain flex locks, that's these. Ammunition, they're legal in pretty much every single state. So uh, good to go there. And just real quick because, so I forgot to mention this in the video, but the magazines, they cannot be loaded in that box. Everything has to be unloaded. The gun has to be unloaded. You can't have anything like this. So unloaded magazines, unloaded firearm, and that's how you load it. And like you'll see in the video, the magazines are empty. So make sure you do that. Four magazines with me, two, Plus one, Taran Tactical mags. All right, those are the plus ones. These Glock 43 mags are six rounders, and yeah, with the plus one extension, gives you seven. One in the chamber, you got eight. So, two of those, a stock factory Glock mag, and then the plus two Taran Tactical mag. So, four magazines, and then the Glock 43, which you, you have to have unloaded. They're not going to pick up your gun and check it. They're not going to, they might, they can if they want, but generally they're not going to, but you just make sure you have all of that set up before you get to the airport. Cause they're just essentially going to open it up and say, is it safe? Is it unloaded? And you're going to say, yes, they're going to give you a little piece of paper. You're going to sign it. They're going to look at it and that's it. They're going to, they're going to tell you to close it. They're going to tell you to lock it and they're going to send you and they're going to put it back in your carry your checked in luggage and they're gonna put the piece of paper on top and they're gonna put it through the conveyor belt. That's that's essentially it. I mean, you know, once you do that, you can't you can't keep the ammo. You, you, my holster wouldn't fit in there, but that's okay. The holster, you can actually keep. You don't actually have to keep the holster. You can throw that in your check bag. You can throw it in your carry bag, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so this holster and my neo mag pocket magazine clip which is the little guy here that you keep an extra mag and it just basically looks like a pocket knife when you have an extra mag on you now i wasn't able to carry my firearm either way in this situation in any of these states so I, there wasn't really any need for me to have this but just in case i did bring it and these two guys they just went right in my checked uh, my carry luggage my carry on the plane luggage said absolutely nothing about it. I carried a flashlight. Um, I just carried my little EDC Olight, uh, sunglasses. I had some accessories. I mean, this is the bag I took on the actual airplane. And it just had my MacBook, all my electronics, all the important stuff, camera gear, all that stuff was in here. And my holster. They said nothing about it. Actually, under the TSA website in their, in their guidelines, 
you can do that. So pretty awesome. So the life pod, I, I really like it. It's an electronic box. It's what, excuse me. It's waterproof, seals up really nicely. You just lock it. TSA is going to look at it. They're going to, they're going to, when they're, when they're done doing their check, they're going to say, okay, lock it for us. You're going to lock it. They're going to make sure they're going to see if it's locked. They're not going to be able to open it. They're going to say, okay, put it in your bag. They're going to give you that piece of paper. You're going to sign it. It's going to say safely unloaded firearms or whatever. I forgot. I threw the paper out, but I was going to save it for the video, but I don't know where it, where it is. They're going to put that right on top in your <clears throat> checked in luggage and right down the conveyor it goes. Now, here's the benefit to this. What's cool about this situation is they take extra care of your bag because they do not want to lose your firearm. They do not want to deal with someone picking up that bag. It has a gun in it. They don't, they don't want to deal with that. They're going to take extra, extra care. The chances of your bag getting lost when you check a firearm in through TSA under any airport or under any airline is a snowball's chance in hell. I mean, they actually go out of their way to make sure that that bag gets to you and that's awesome and i'll explain so when i land it in lax you know you stand by the conveyor lee's on the she's out oh, tell me when the conveyor starts i said the conveyor started so bags are starting to come down the chute they're going around the conveyor and i'm waiting i'm waiting in my bags nope <laughs> not coming down that conveyor so there was a, a lady there who was you know turning bags and making sure they're not getting caught up on other bags and stuff that worked at the, you know, for the airline. And I walked over to her, I said, Hey, my bag never came down. I'm a little concerned because it has a firearm in it. And she goes, Oh, I have your bag. It's over here in the special area. I'm like, the special area. So yeah, they, they, uh, they don't send it down with the regular bags because you know, the chance of somebody picking it up, you know, you never know. So they take extra precautions. They, they put it in a separate area you go get your bag from the actual desk area. They take your license, they check it, your bag, boom. It was so easy and simple. In fact, I will never travel on an airline without my gun being checked through my checked bag ever again because just the extra care you get for it, I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, you don't get mixed in with the other luggage. It's it's a beautiful thing, right? Kind of Kind of a little loophole there, right? So... That is uh, the LifePod 2.0, or 1, I guess it's the 1.0. Of course, you know, the Pew Pew Edition one from Cully on the Wear is, is super cool with the black multicam and all that, but the thing's like $200. There's some other upgrades for it that are a little bit cooler than this one and stuff, but like overall, you know, there's one that has some slots up here. You can put documentation, license, passports, things of that nature up there, which is pretty cool. There was one thing that was troublesome about this that I noticed on the Lockpick Lawyers uh, channel. Once I already bought it, and I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Well, basically, so right here is the reprogram button, right? So this is how you program your lock right here with that button. You hit that button, you put a sequence in, you do it again, you do it again, and then it programs your code in. So when this thing shut, you can actually slip a fork inside here and hit that button and essentially reprogram the code, hit the button, reprogram, hit the button, reprogram, and that essentially just open the thing because you can reprogram it while it's locked. But new security upgrade, that program button is disengaged. It does, it will not work. It will not reprogram when that button is locked. So when that, when that, when this is locked, that disengages that reprogram button so even if you put a fork in there and you try to do it if this is locked it won't do it just the same as like when you and actually they changed that they did that upgrade because of the lockpick lawyers video so could you imagine being the guy who breaks into a product and makes them change it because you made a video opening it it's awesome so when you, when you go to reprogram, you actually have to unlock this. You can't have it locked when you're reprogramming. So that's it's part of the sequence now. So it's pretty cool. I actually really like it. And, you know, that's how you fly TSA. My experience with it was was really good. I had no issues at all. When I, when I left the small, tiny airport in Iowa that I flew out of to get to Chicago, that airport was a little bit different. When I told them I was checking, you know, you walk up to the desk and go, hey, I'm checking a firearm and that's it. Just real calm, cool, don't be nervous. Don't act suspicious. Just say, hey, I got a firearm, I got to check in. And they just say, okay, open it up, open your bag, take it out, open it. 
And I'll ask you first, is it unloaded? Now, there might be a sketchy TSA person there to go, you know, because you're opening and they don't know if you're going to just pull a gun out, you know? So be, you know, make sure they can see everything. Don't just like hide things. Like make sure they can see it. When you, when you can, when you're going to open this thing, make sure they can see, keep your hand nice and clear. Don't be super nervous about it and be like a robot. Just grab it nice and calm and make sure they can see it. Say, hey, do you want me to put it here so you can see? You know, I feel better if you came over, you know, just got to imagine like you have a gun inside this thing. And if you're like, if you just like grab it real quick and do it, you're probably going to get tackled. So like, don't do that. Think of it from their point of view. They're probably a little nervous. They don't know you. And you know, you, you just never know these days. So take that into mind. Going into that small little airport. When I said, Hey, I got a firearm to check in. She's right on the radio. Another guy came over and she looked super nervous, like she'd never had to deal with that before. So I just was like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it. You guys can see, there it is. And then I, you know, I locked it or whatever. And they actually like, they like opened it like this way and then like flipped it or something. I don't know what they did, but they like flipped it like upside down and then they like checked the bottom. I don't know. I don't know what, what exactly they were doing. But they like wiped it with this stuff and then like the mags were falling out. Like, what are they doing? So, uh, and then she finally got it closed and she hit the lock on. She goes, oh, is it locked? Is you good to go? That was it. They put it back in the bag. They put my little piece of paper on the top. They put it on the airplane and the air, airplanes take it from there. Even when you do a layover, you don't have to do that again. When, when you do the layover, uh, they, they put your luggage on the next plane. You don't have to worry about anything. And they take, like I said, they take extra, extra care of that bag. They know where the, uh, they put a tag, a red tag on the outside. They know the bags that have guns in them. Okay, so they're they're not going to be like, oh, there's the gun bag and just put it with all the other ones. No, they're taking that bag first. They're making sure it gets on a plane it needs to get on. They don't want to lose firearms. That's an absolute mess. So a couple of cool features about this before we end this video. If the battery dies inside, this is a nine volt battery. I will show you inside. I already took it out, so it'll be quicker. Just a little nine volt. Make sure you have that. It does not come with a nine volt battery. All right, so make sure you, you have that on hand for when you get your life pod. It has a key lock that will prevent the key from being picked inside. There's a little switch inside there to switch on and off. So when you open this little door, they can't pick the lock. It actually un makes it unpickable inside here so nine volt battery a uh, little key lock there's a program button is inside there as well if we open this up this little door it does come with two sets of keys so in case you forget your code or whatever you can open it now here you go there's your little doorway in there there's your key these are super easy to pick but you can turn that switch and it's, it, it, it locks it so you can't you can't pick the lock there's a usb port there that you can charge the device if the battery dies and then you can open it and put a new battery in so it's got some backup features there for you there that are pretty pretty nice um makes it really simple and user friendly and it's uh it's just i, I like it a lot it comes with this little lock here it comes with the strap that goes inside the actual box itself so when you you know this little strap that goes here you can actually strap this to like a fence pole or a tree or something when you're camping whatever so nobody can just walk away with your 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 pod so and then you have your lock here so those are just a couple of quick little features it comes with just in case the battery dies it comes with two keys and stuff like that really cool little emergency backup and uh they really there's there's it's dummy proof kind of so it's pretty cool Good to go there. And that, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. It's it's really easy, don't stress about it. Don't be nervous about it. It's totally legal, it's totally fine. A lots of millions of people do it every day. It's all good, so don't be don't be scared about it. You could travel with AR-15s, you could travel with whatever. I'm not like, gonna bring my AR with me, right? But uh, I am gonna drive across the country with the thing, so, you know, but that's just gonna be unloaded. It's gonna be in the U-Haul and all that stuff, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and we'll do more videos on that if you like. Let me know what you guys think of this, if you have one, or your experience with TSA. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Patreon link will be below. I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you all. Peace.